So today is a good day for the Chrisley family. I said this to a journalist, and after I said that, he said, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Did you just say today is a good day for the Chrisley family? I want to make sure that I got that correct because I'm coming to you as an expert and I want to quote this correctly. I said, no, you heard me correctly. Can I explain why? He said, I would love to hear why. When Todd and Julie Chrisley were convicted, it was a formality they were going to be going to prison. And it also appeared a formality, and it turned out to be true, that this judge would not give bond pending their appeal. So everyone knew they were heading in today. As a former federal defendant, I can tell you the waiting and wondering is the hardest part of this experience. So while I was living in my home or the Chrisleys were living in their home and feeling free, inside, we're already in prison 24 hours a day thinking what's to come. The difference, however, is while free, we're not getting credit for time served. That's why today was a good day for the Chrisleys. It was a formality that they were going. Therefore, by surrendering to prison today, the clock finally starts ticking. Todd, one day in the books, can't take it away. Julie, a day in prison, cannot take it away. The clock is ticking and eventually they're going to be home. Now, the journeys are long, I know, at 12 years and seven years, and it requires a great deal of resolve and it, an ability to really overcome adversity to get through it. But I suspect they will. I really do. Now, admittedly, I've never watched the show, though I've begun to cover the case, and I believe they're going to lead and get through this with their dignity, and I would encourage them, of course, to never complain, lament about the length of their sentence because it can be off-putting to new staff. That certainly we don't want. Now, I know some people call me an apologist because, well, I work with people who are traversing this system, and yes, I have an interest because many retain our team to help them get the shortest sentence higher levels of liberty on probation. And of course, yes, we help myriad people get home from prison early, including some people that you loathe and generally do not like. It's my job. I love it. I'm in a fortunate position to help people get through this system. I had myriad opportunities when I came home. I wanted to embrace my journey through the system. I wanted to embrace how odd and weird and strange it is that I talk about this for a living when I had so many other things that I could do and still do. I felt like this was my calling in life and I enjoy helping people that many people kick aside and discount and discard and call criminal and scum. Even before I filmed this video, I received a message from someone who said, I hope these people are buried underneath the prison. Chrisleys don't know that person. That person doesn't know the Chrisleys, but yet we take some pain. And Excuse me. Yeah, we take pleasure in the pain of, of, of other people. I will say they did go to trial. They were held accountable and they lost, convicted by a jury of their peers, and there should be consequences that follow. So while I'm sympathetic, I have never said that someone who breaks the law shouldn't be held accountable. What I will say is, in an enlightened society, you as a taxpayer, do you want to pay to warehouse Todd Chrisley for 12 years in prison? Is that a good use of our tax dollars? Do you think he needs to be warehoused for 12 years? Give me an honest answer. Leave a comment. Do you think Julie Chrisley is likely to reoffend. Do you want your tax dollars to warehouse her in a minimum security camp for seven years to the detriment of social services like homelessness, depression, mental health, drug addiction? I was in Los Angeles a few weeks ago, walking to a meeting with a lawyer in downtown. I saw a woman holding a baby, shooting heroin into her body, a man across the street naked, defecating on the street. And it's so common. We're so conditioned to it. Like nobody even responds to it anymore. It's like, oh, this is just a normal day in Los Angeles. Rather than warehousing Todd Chrisley at a cost of, what, $30,000, $40,000 a year in a minimum security camp for a dozen years, I'm not saying there shouldn't be a sanction, should be some prison, but I'd like to see the resources go elsewhere. That's my opinion, though I understand I'm jaded. In a video, in an interview I did with a magazine earlier today, they kind of went through the lay of the land on what it would look like for specifically Todd and Julie inside of this prison. And of course, a lot of people will call this place a country club, primarily because, as I said in this article, that there's a track, there's exercise equipment. It's part of the reason people call these minimum security camps club fed or country clubs. You'll see no fences or barbed wire. You'll see a track, football field, soccer field, volleyball, bocce ball court, racquetball, tennis, maybe even pickleball. So you have a very open environment. Well, it might look like a corporate office park or junior college, or some will say, country club. But the reality is it is federal prison. There are lasting consequences that follow bad choices. Now that they've both surrendered to prison, I presume they're adjusting in a way where they're not going to speak to staff any more than they have to. They're not going to complain. 
They're not going to cut in line. They're going to wash their hands after using the restroom. They're not going to speak too loudly on the phone. They're not going to change the channel in the TV room. And I presume they're both going to wake early and create a deliberate routine. They'll do their job and they're going to be productive and they're going to find a way to give back and contribute inside of this prison. And in so doing, they'll be contributing to their fellow prisoner, which gives them some leeway when they make an eventual mistake, as all prisoners do. But it could also help them advance their release date if staff sees they're contributing to this community of felons. As I said at the end of this article, I count on them to succeed. I count on them to have very productive prison experiences and grow closer with their family. Just if people who have been really successful before prison tend to be really successful through prison, and they tend to be very successful after prison, because those people first and foremost address this. This experience is harder on those that love and support me. And I'm going to work to prove worthy of that love and support. And to do that, I don't want to tell them what I'm doing. I'm going to show them what I'm doing. I'm going to document what I'm doing. And if they can do that, 12 years will not feel like 12 years. And seven years for Julie will not feel like seven years. So these are some of the thoughts I conveyed to this journalist who was taken aback when I said, today's a good day for the Chrisley family. And it is because they've all been in prison for a very, very, very long time without getting credit. Today, at least. Finally, both Todd and Julie have a day in the books and they can never take that away from them. Thanks for watching.